Hey there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Let's say you have a CMS collection with lots of items, and you have a specific field with several repetitive values. What you want is to get a list of just the distinct values within that collection. So for example, if Mercedes-Benz occurs twice in this cars collection, you want to have that once in a list so that you can use it, for example, in a drop down just with all the different car makes or all the distinct values in your field. So we're going to be learning how to do that today using Wix data query. Before we hop in, I want to tell you about this really cool thing in YouTube called the subscribe button. And it's right under the video. And after you click it, two things are going to happen. One is I'm going to be really, really happy and I'm going to go and make a lot more interesting tutorials for everybody uh, because I see that lots of people like it and are watching the channel. And you'll also not miss out on the new videos that come out every Monday, which the next video may be that video that transforms your Wix site completely and saves your life uh, or at least your business. Um, so that's something that I recommend checking out. Again, it's a black button right under the video. And uh, now that you've found that and you've clicked it, we can hop in and get started. Okay, so today is going to be a quick, fun tutorial, and we're going to be talking about a part of Wix query that we haven't really touched on before in the channel. We've done a lot of things with Wix query in general, but Wix query is quite a robust API, and we haven't gone to the edges of the Wix query universe and explored everything that's possible. And I think you'll find this feature quite useful, especially if you're setting up something like filters for a directory or something along those lines. So let me explain, give a little background for what we're trying to do here and what we're going to be using in terms of the Wix query API. So I have a blank uh, Wix Studio website here. Everything I'm showing can also be done on Wix Classic. And I have created a CMS collection right over here. And I called it cars. And basically it has just mock data about some fake cars. So we have information such as the make, model, um, model year, etc., VIN. I'll pretend I know anything about cars. And essentially what I'm going to be trying to do on my site is I want to, for example, create a filter in a drop down for this collection. And I want to do it using code. Um, and for example, we want to filter, let's say, the make or the model. So you'll notice that within make and model, we have some recurring values. OK, so for example, um, Mercedes, we have another Mercedes here. OK, so there's two Mercedes and we somehow want to get a list of all the possible makes and assign that to a drop down so that it could be used as a filter. OK, so that's our goal here uh, for today's tutorial. And there are several approaches that we can take to do this. Uh, for example, we can create a an array inside of our code. OK, we can hard code in an array of all the values of make. We can also create a separate collection, which lists just the different makes of the cars. Uh, but if we have our data in this format, there's another thing that we can do, which is a bit easier and a bit more scalable than the first two options that I explained. And that is using a property on Wix query called distinct. OK, so this is uh, what it looks like over here in the documentation and distinct replaces find. So if you're familiar with Wix query, usually what we would do is run a query and then at the end we'd have dot find. And dot find would essentially get items from that query. What distinct is going to do is it's going to give us the distinct values of a specific field. So for example, if we assign the make field as the distinct field, what Wix will do is it will give us essentially an array, a list of all of the values that are unique inside of make. So it'll give us Volkswagen, Mercury, Infinity, Mercedes Benz, etc. But it won't give us Mercedes Benz twice. It'll only give it once. So essentially at the end, what we'll have is exactly that list that we're looking for to assign to our dropdown. 
So now that we understand the background a little bit, let's hop in and actually get it done. So first things first, if you haven't done so yet, uh, please go ahead and turn on code mode. Uh, you'll find it over here on the left inside of Studio. And if you're in Classic, then you'll see the Dev Mode button somewhere up here on top. And this will open up our code panel we'll, where we will be writing our Velo code over here on the bottom. So we're going to start off writing code and later on we're going to add in the UI elements like a drop down to demonstrate what this code looks like once we assign it to an actual element inside of our canvas. So here inside of the page code, we're going to start off just like we would with a regular Wix data query. So we're going to go ahead and import Wix data. And here, I'm going to get rid of the code that we have here inside of the onReady. And right outside it, I'm going to build a function. And the goal of this function is going to be to get that list of all our car makes. So I'm going to say here, async function. And it's asynchronous because we're doing a data query. That's always asynchronous because it involves a network request and fetching data from a database. And I'll call this get car makes. So the final goal of this function is going to be to return an array with all of our car makes. And it's not going to take any parameters. And the first thing we'll do inside of it is run our query. So I'm going to say here const cars query result. So a variable to store the result of the query. And this is going to be equal to await Wix data dot query. So so far, very similar to how we would set up a regular data query. I'm going to pass in the name of the collection. And then instead of running dot find, okay, so this is what a typical query might look like, okay, if we weren't trying to do anything special here. Instead of doing dot find, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing dot distinct. Okay, so instead of find, we're going to be doing dot distinct. Currently I have a little error here because we expect to have a value in a parameter essentially inside of distinct and that is the field that we want to get the distinct list of items from so let's go ahead and find the name of the field the idea of the field that we want to use so i'm going to go here to the code panel databases and here we can see that it's both called make uh, as the name and as the id what's over here in the parentheses and I also have this easy copy button, which I can just use to grab the ID. And then I'm going to go back into our function. And inside of the distinct parentheses, I'm going to put the ID of the field that we want to essentially get the distinct values from. So after we get that, I am going to extract the items. So just like a regular query, we get a list of items. But this list of items is not going to be the full items from the collection. So it's not going to have all of the fields. It's just going to be an array, in this case, of strings of the distinct values in that field. So let's say const. I'm going to create a new variable. And I'm going to call it car makes. Because essentially what's going to happen now is we're just going to get an array with all of the different car makes. And I'm going to say that this equals to our cars query result dot items okay the items from the query result the query result in general will come back with lots of metadata just like a regular wix query but we only want the items we only want that list and then i'm going to return the car makes okay because remember the purpose of this function was just to get an array of all the car makes so what i'll do here is inside of my on ready function i will say here console.log car makes and I'll call this function car makes, uh, let's say car make, uh, get car makes, that's what I called it. Uh, but since it's asynchronous, okay, we're going to have to also turn our on ready into an async function. And I'm just going to add here await get car makes. Okay, so essentially what we should get in our log is uh, the word car makes and then the list of all the car makes. So let's go ahead and go into preview mode and see if this is working or not and how it looks. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, preview in editor. And uh, let's see. So our page is loading here. And you can see here inside of our developer console, 
we have car makes and here we have a list. And you can see here that we have 50 car makes here. And my worry is that we may have 50 car makes essentially inside of that collection, which has about a thousand items. But uh, we might also be encountering a scenario where we're hitting the upper limit of the query. Okay, so it could be that Wix found uh, exactly 50 because there were 50, but it could be also that 50 is just the upper limit of the query, and we need to extend that limit in order to see if there are more of these makes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the editor. And what I'll do is I'll increase the limit on the query to 1,000. OK? And since there are 1,000 items in this collection, I know that there can't be more than 1,000 makes. Uh, so in this case, we'll definitely find all the makes that we have. Um, if you have more than a thousand items in your collection, a thousand is the upper limit in terms of what we can put. So you may have to run several queries using the dot has next property of the query in order to get all of the makes if you think that there are more than a thousand or your specific field that you're trying to get. Uh, usually for fields that are being used as a filter, it's highly unlikely that there are indeed a thousand different uh, distinct options. Um, it would be pretty interesting user experience to have a drop down with over a thousand options to choose from. Uh, but just in case that's your scenario, you should know that you'll have to handle it a little differently. So now that I added this upper limit here, let's go ahead and go back into preview mode. And let's see uh, how many car makes are returned. So as you'll see now that we got back 60, okay, instead of 50. And now I'm pretty confident that these are all the different car makes. So essentially what Wix did is out of my 1,000 items in the collection, it went through all of them, quote unquote, and it just extracted all the unique values that make could be. So in terms of my car's collection, a make could be one of these 60 different items that you see here. So the next step will be, okay, what do I do now with this list of 60 items? So we are going to assign these as the values of a dropdown. To achieve this, uh, let's first go ahead and add in a dropdown element. So I'm going to go ahead and look for inputs and then for dropdowns right over here. And I'm going to just pick a uh, note. That was a date picker. I'm not going to pick a date picker. I'm going to pick a dropdown. Let me see if I can find them. There we go. These are the dropdowns. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to, let's say, change this in the settings. And I will call this in the field title, I'll call this makes. And the, the uh, let's change this here to select a make. And then uh, in terms of the values, I don't need to change anything here because I'm going to assign these values using code. So let me open up the panel right over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is give this drop down a unique ID. So I'm going to go over here on the bottom right, and I'm going to call this our makes drop down. And then over here, I'm going to create a new function. Okay, right over here under our get car makes function. And I'll call that async function. And let's call this setup makes drop down. Okay, so the job of this function is to set up the dropdown so that the options in the dropdown correspond to the different makes from my collection. So I'm going to go and uh, first of all, I'm going to get the list of makes using the function we already built. So I'm going to say here const car makes equals to, and I'm going to use await, and I'm going to call the get car makes function, just like that. After that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign those car makes to our dropdown using the options property of the dropdown. So I'm going to select the dropdown using Velo code. And then I'm going to say that the options of the dropdown should be equal to the car makes. But we need to do a little refactoring here, a little redesign of what the car makes data looks like because options. Uh, the options of a dropdown need to be formatted in a specific way. And car makes is currently just an array of strings, but it needs to be an array of objects with values and labels. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map these values, and I'm going to say that for each make, we're going to return an object which is going to have a label and a value. And the label is going to be the make, and also the value is going to be the make. Okay, just like that. And now, instead of uh, us running this console log here inside of the onReady function, instead, I'm just going to call the setup makes dropdown function. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like in preview mode. Okay, we're in preview mode. And uh, let me check this drop down. And now you can see that this is essentially a list of all the distinct options that we have inside of our uh, collection for makes. Okay, and then this could be used in order to either let somebody, let's say, fill out a form and select a make, or it can allow us to filter a list or something like that. Um, really, whatever you want to do with it. But this is a cool way to get all the distinct values of a certain field in your data collection. And remember, this is only an example with the drop down. You let your mind go wild and build whatever you want with it. I thought it was a really uh, cool feature that's probably a little less known inside of Wix query. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to uh, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or follow ups or anything, you just want to chat, please leave a comment uh, below. I always read all the comments and I try to respond to all of them. If I didn't respond, it's probably either because I didn't understand or I'm still thinking about it or uh, it's just a very, very specific question. And then you probably want to put it in our forum with like more info from your project and stuff like that. So it'll be a little easier to uh, give you an answer. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like this every week. And I'll see you next time.